you wanted to see the four big premium estates all in one video. And here it is. Take your time and enjoy the Audi A6 Avant, the BMW 5 Series Touring, the Mercedes E-Class Estate or T-Model as it is called, and the Volvo V90. We show all four cars in exterior, interior and driving. The Audi A6 Avant or Estate or Wagon or Combi, however you want to call it. So in the front we have this huge single frame grille, we got the, the S line on the exterior but still with chrome contrast here and that's the way I would also pick it. Then a Sepang blue color, that's what we call Thomas blue here because this color here is my favorite one. 4 meters 94 or 16 foot 2 is the length, it's the same for the A6 sedan and for the A6 estate. And you see this rather simple design language here with the chrome roof rails stretched towards the rear, rear end. If you compare it to the predecessor generation, it looks way flatter, although you don't lose too much headroom on the inside, I can already tell you so far. In the rear you can see that those taillights are pretty much similar for sedan and for the estate. If you have the higher trim bills, you can also see you have the cascading turning indicators I'm mean, using with the key here at the moment. Pretty spectacular effect always. But the question is, you know, when I was driving behind some of the cars, I think at some point it's maybe also a little bit annoying. I have mixed feelings about that. Under the hood here today, a new engine, because on the petrol side there's usually the 3 liter TVSI with 340 horsepower, but here now the new 2 liter TVSI equipped for this engine with 245 horsepower. Essentially, you could say. It's, you know, <laughs> the engine is also uh, fitted in the Golf GTI, but here, of course, we have a little bit more room as this is here the MLB platform where you put the engines in, in a longitudinal way. And then there's also a 3 liter TDI and two horsepower specs, and a 2 liter TDI will also be available. Those are your choices so far. This is the car key, but you can also use the keyless entry function as I said. And we also have the soft close right there. Ah, magic. Of course you have to pay it extra. Then we have the design selection line on the interior here today. And this for example here with matte wood. Really feels very natural, really cool. Then bright Alcantara and what a great contrast in styling to the blue exterior. Galvanized buttons here, they have even a clicking sound. So let's get inside. Easy entry, but a standard, let's say, sedan seating position, although we have the Avant here, but those cars are really not different in the height. You can vary the height a little bit if you pick either, you know, from go from a base to the sport suspension, which is 20 millimeters 20 mm lower than the adaptive suspension we have here today, or with the air suspension, there you can also you know, change the height, but the base height uh, then is usually the same. But uh, who buys this car with the 20 millimeters lower sports suspension? I guess it won't have a big take rate. This is the interior overview, pretty spectacular as well, especially this wooden area. You could say it's a little bit too much maybe, but I really like it. The thing I like a little bit less are those glossy black elements. I would like, you know, to have them maybe in wood or aluminum style as well, so they collect fingerprints. But 
don't put your hands on there. Please don't. <laughs> this Quattro is also illuminated at night. There's also a special night riding episode with the A6 sedan we've done if you're interested in night riding. Or night rider. Don't you like night rider? So, <laughs> it starts here with this 8-inch screen on the top part. This one is the optional 10.1-inch screen, the MMI Navigation Plus. In the lower part, you always have this one, the 8.6-inch because the climate function is controlled right there. Soon we'll also take this one here again in detail. And if you have the MMI Navigation Plus, then you switch from analog instruments over to fully digital instruments, which we have here. Soon also more details to that. The volume control is also here on the steering wheel. On the left side, you can browse through the menu of the digital instruments or change the view. Soon more details again to that. And also on the steering wheel, there's the voice control. I'm cold. What temperature should I set for you? 22 degrees. I've already set the system to 22 degrees. Ah, you see, she even realized that it was already at 22 degrees. So, this is really good. You can not only, you know, stumble around on the lower part because it can be distracting while driving. Use the voice function also for the navigation, for example, that will be good. Then the lower middle console, again, also I like this matte wood, so you can also hear how it feels. Maybe we should start an auto fuel car SMR episode here. <laughs> what do you think? Then the cup holders, adaptive, also with a 12 volt power supply, and then this automatic gear lever with the electric handbrake. And here the latest build of the virtual cockpit, which has the advantage that you can switch the views. For example, have a bigger map or so on. You can also zoom in and out with your left thumb then. Pretty amazing. And of course, here some, you know, put the radio features or the consumption. It went up now a little bit as we were driving around on the parking lot. But you can also get it a little bit lower, talking about it soon when we drive the car, of course. Well, of course you have enough legroom in the rear, even for tall people but considering the length of those vehicles and that's the problem in the segment altogether I mean I have this legroom in the Honda Jazz so the package so what they use of the space they have on the exterior put in the interior is still kind of weird but that's you know also counting for all the competitors what about the hatch this is the important stuff here you can open it here you can open it with the key or there's also this uh, entry function available with the foot kick, pretty cool when you have stuff in your hands. And there we are, good opening, very high. I'm one with this 86 or 6 foot 1, if you remember. And then there's the closing button, we'll soon show you that. Here, the top cover raises automatically, that's really handy. The standard setup is 565 liters. And just to put a backpack in here, then you can see, you know, the size. The width here is just a little bit over one meters and that's really important you can get stuff in and out very easily clear advantage over the sedan and also over 30 liters more in capacity and interestingly we have here the two liter tfsi today which is brand new basically um, wasn't available so far in this case here 245 horsepower and the all-wheel drive is also the Quattro Ultra. That's basically for all of the Audi A6, except the three liter TDI, the strong horsepower version. It's 286 horsepower. We tested that one lately as well, which is still a real Quattro all-wheel drive with 4060, basically, you know, as a, as a base setup. And this one here, those Quattro Ultra systems, they are all front wheel drive plus rear wheel drive on demand um, well as a driver do you really feel that mm, that really depends on how you drive in most cases people will not really notice it but of course there's always you no know, a big fan group who says i really want still the very classic all-wheel drive the newer systems maybe have the advantage that they sometimes consume a little bit less fuel since when you go slowly just the front wheels are being used for the drive and then when you apply some more power also more is applied to the rear wheels so i'm driving now 100 kilometers an hour already and it's again so super silent and the car is extremely stable on the road 
and we already experienced that one with the sedan as well it's such a great motor vehicle it's one of the best there is just you know cruising a long way have this very comfortable seating position although we're not like in this upright suv seating, seating position but for a normal car seating position this is one of the best you have here with those uh, seats here as well so they really figured out how to build those com very comfortable seats no matter which material is used now i let that aside now um, then very easy to accelerate also i'm just a little bit on the throttle but although we just have the two liter four cylinder here i have a good and sovereign acceleration so that was also the question initially is it not sovereign enough if you have the smaller engine i can say absolutely enough absolutely fine and we of course show you soon a little bit more acceleration that you can also experience that but to me it's also important that the engine is not only performing really hammered but that it's also giving you oh, quite cool with the planes that's also giving you a sovereign smooth and soft performance that you don't have you know to push all the rpms until something is happening so at the moment, there's unlimited speed, so we can go to the sport mode that we don't have to shift that much, goes more. Let's go just from 100, let's see. Yep, that's 150 kilometers an hour. So that was 100 to 150 kilometers an hour. This is where the difference between the three liter engines and the two liter engines becomes apparent. If you start from standstill from zero, the smaller ones will also do just fine. But here in the higher speed regions, you know, which is again mainly a German thing, um, there you do feel a significant difference in acceleration because then the bigger displacement engines have just more punch, more power, Still, I mean, this is quite decent still, you know. Um, but again, for big accelerations on the motorway, then it's a difference, or maybe when it's, uh, you know, like full packed or something. So, let's go back in lane. Considering this is not a small car, we still have a decent overview also to the rear. Um, even a little bit better here now in the Avant, or in the Estate. And would I, with closed eyes, realize if I'm driving the sedan or the estate? Not really, no one could tell. It's basically the same vehicle, just with you no know, different rear ending. Um, so I would always go with the estate uh, because it's just more practical, you know, in, in every sense. And again, also the rear visibility is actually a little bit better. That's another advantage. You know, even if the tarmac gets a little bit rougher, still remains very silent. It's just from the rain here. But you know, when we're filming outside, it's um, not that pleasant to get the rain, of course. But you know, when, when driving, it's sometimes also quite good to test the car in the rain. Also, when we have those very freshly built front windshields, so cool how clean, you know, everything gets then with the wipers. It's pretty amazing. And also when the you know when the raindrops are on this very fresh paint and they still peel off like with the lotus effect, that's also pretty amazing. We have several assistance systems, of course, inbuilt in this vehicle. Uh, overall about 38 different ones you can get. The base one, the emergency brake assist, that one is already built in. in every standard A6. An option you can get, for example, the adaptive cruise control. I set it here on the left side of the steering wheel with a separate column. Just press it and then distance to the car in front of me is being kept. You probably also have seen the blind spot monitor, which appears then here in the side mirrors. This is actually to me one of the most important features to get, um, especially since the B pillars on those vehicles nowadays are pretty much blocking the views and so it's always good to have those. Here by the way, it's quite wet now after some rain, but still giving you so much sovereignty and calmness in this vehicle. At the same time, it is actually sporty to drive, 
although it's not really a lightweight car, but you can drive it in a sporty way because it just handles so well on the road. Here when I'm a little bit faster now, even though it's a little bit thick now on the road, really cool. Driving wise, it doesn't really matter if you have the Estate or the Sedan version. This one here, of course, is more practical, sadly not available in the US. And, you know, probably most of the manufacturers say Estates won't sell in the US. But we also receive feedback that you think it's maybe different nowadays. I don't know. What do you think? Leave me your comments. Exterior, a very sharp design, of course, here in the Thomas Blue, Sepang Blue color today, really beautiful also with those 21 inch alloys of course quite expensive the interior so well done as for the build quality that's really amazing as for the control concept you can argue about that there are surely some weaknesses but also some advantages that come with that of course um, a big issue that they don't offer animal skin alternatives in the higher trims just in the low trim sometimes or in the US you can quite often also get the leather rest but not in all trim levels so that's something they have to work on sustainability wise other than that really great what this interior is offering especially then if you compare it with the trunk and the sedan I would always go for this one although I like sedans more visually this one is just you know when you put a bicycle in the rear or something um, with a sedan you have sometimes you know when you put stuff in just a little few centimeters that are missing that's actually way more flexibility especially when you flip the seats for example very long loading area and also in height so overall for sure one of the best cars in this segment especially due to this very calm riding and also the two liter tfsi which we've drove the first time for this vehicle day it's actually a golf gti engine you know so <laughs> it performed quite well. So I can also recommend this engine in the whole lineup. The BMW 5 Series Touring. It's great that we have the headlights, always standard equipment with LED. Optional, what we, what we have here, are those high beam LED that you have and then with 500 meters of a range. And you see they lead over with the aluminum accentuation here to the now bigger double kidney with adaptive air intakes. At the moment they are closed. 4 meters 94 or 16 foot 2 is the length. Same for the sedan and the estate version. Here we also have an M Sports package just for the visual part with the M logo here. Then 17 up to 19 inch rims. So we see the 19 inch rims here and they look very beautiful also in the M style. Also the rear is rather conservative but you know they do have the strategy to go for an evolution in design and uh, this segment is also you know not about doing design revolutions in general. The tail lights they are pretty similar to the ones we see at the sedan just you know this area is of course different and here you will see we'll still have the split hatch and if engine doesn't really matter to you you don't need six you need eight cylinders whatever you just say i also want to go with the basis and maybe even for that one you can get a sporty styling And now to the engine information, here we go. So this one here is the big diesel 530D, 265 horsepower, 3 liter of displacement. Then there's a 520D, 2 liter, 190 horsepower. And then we have 2 liter petrol, 252 horsepower, the 530i, or 3 liter, 540i with 340 horsepower that's the engine lineup so far and now new was the m550i the new eight cylinder then with 462 horsepower and then i got the question if that will also be available for the touring no it won't be so we can tell you today they have decided to launch here for the diesel the m 
or in the two ring combination, the M550D. So the two ring will get the most powerful, or this M performance version as the diesel, and it will still be the you know basic diesel engine we see here right now, but not just with twin power turbo, but with four turbos then, and it will reach a power output of 400 horsepower. The big key here for the 5 Series. And you can also remotely park that car. We will show you that at the very end of this episode a little bit. Or also check the 550i review for that. Let's open the door. Here we go. And visually very nicely done with this aluminum and bright contrast. And very well processed, also soft up the at the top, fairly easy entry, and the one is 86 or 6 foot 1. And this one is here now equipped with a panoramic roof that leaves less headroom um, than we have in the sedan, for example. We've shown you the 550i without the panoramic roof, then you can compare it if you're interested in that. Then what you can see here, all soft in the dashboard, high class building processing, and also in the lower part, this is not hard plastic. And they really step up the game, so the 5 shoes is the best processed BMW from the interior so far. We really have to say that. Climate unit is in the lower part and you can see visually one unit with a new screen. It starts with 8.8, .8, this little smaller. This one then the optional screen because the manufacturers always equip everything with the car even um, if we want to show you some basic cars sometimes it's quite often not possible. This one here 10.25 in inch instruments you see they come alive when you start the engine nice visualization this is standard mode and if you go to the sport mode you see they change and you have a bigger digital speed and this red racing background and now to the head-up display you can see it there it's not flickering by the way in real life it's just on camera and uh, speed info for example but also gps info will be displayed on there and it is 70 percent larger it's a very big one it's the best on the market i think an infotainment system in detail, you see at the right and left side there's the sensors. And then you can also use it as a touchscreen now. It's quite new still at BMW and good responsive times. I really like that. Very good entry. The doors open almost 90 degrees. That's remarkable. Then this huge panoramic roof. Also good for the rear passengers that you can see outside. It's really nice. Headroom wise, Still some left again. I'm one meter 86 or six foot one. Opening the electric hatch at the standard equipment, and wow, that's a good offering of room. Some hangers right there, and for example here you can store the covers. You know the cover for the um, for, for the trunk, and then they just flip right there. And here when I put this one there, also the other one. So good solution and wow, how much stuff we can load through here to the very top. Maybe you're on holiday. Then you can also use the split hatch here and then put something on top. So let's go with our driving part. Interesting is here that we also have this uh, integral steering, the rear axle steering integrated with this vehicle. And this is a really interesting function because the turning circle, for example, really, really small. Look at that. I mean, for such a long vehicle. And also when you um, are turning that vehicle in slalom, especially at low speeds, because at low speeds, the rear axle goes in the 
opposite direction. And wow, this is really a very interesting feeling. Also here when you're steering close surroundings, it's, it's totally different than when you do not have this option. And uh, correct myself for the M550i. Yes, the standard M550i is, is not, uh, not to be meant with that way. But you can still get it optionally for three and a half thousand euros in an um, M professional package, so it's possible. And yes, it feels a little less natural than if you had just have you know the normal steering in the front, because it feels a little bit artificial. But it is a great feature for handling in the city, and it's also a lot of fun. It's really creating a totally different driving feeling. And when you drive faster we've experienced it on the motorway, then the rear axle wheels, they steer in the same direction to get some more stability then. So that is how those systems are always working. But again, it's giving you great agility then, especially at the lower speeds. And this car is of course about the driving dynamics. It's um, really always astonishing how agile the car is, although it's really big. You just, especially with this uh, integral steering, you just want to do slalom all the time. <laughs> it's really so much fun. Oh, I think um, cameraman Michelle is uh, getting a little bit sick by the slalom. <laughs> um, yeah, let's maybe leave that for a second. But I think you guys had fun. You know, you don't feel the G force on camera, so probably better for you guys. The 530D. The big diesel is really powerful. Also has an interesting sound. Not of course that refined as the um, big petrol engines. But for diesel, quite good. Also some sound is um, artificially created. Let's go to the sport mode when we go on the motorway now. Then I'll show you earlier that um, some characteristics changed vis visually and also throttle input for example and um, stiffness 62 120 140 so that was 62 140 kilometers so really good performance also how harmonic how smooth this performance comes so you won't lack any power with this diesel not at all that's for sure. But of course, you know, diesels are getting, you know, in, are in a little crisis, let's talk about that way, in, uh, image wise. There's no great alternative yet to someone who's really dying 40, 50,000 kilometers a year, um, you know, doing salesman business service, service for example. Uh, but for every other, you know, not so much range per year, so it's more and more important to get small petrol engines, maybe all CNG, electric and stuff, that's all evolving. But uh, still a lot of people are going for this diesel here when they use it for a long range car and therefore we're also testing it today here for you. And from the diesels we know in general, uh, this one here, the, BMW, the big BMW diesel, really does a great job. Such a calm engine also um, gives you a lot of serenity. You don't have to turn it up really. You know, also in the lower RPM regions always gives you abundance of power already. And now to our conclusion, 5 Series Touring here for the BMW. So it was very interesting as we have more versatility um, in the rear of course. We still have the same features also <laughs> with the remote parking control I've shown you with the M550i sedan. And um, so there's also the possibility that we just continue talking and the car says goodbye then. <laughs> so exterior, I think elegant sedan, that's for sure. Interior, quite versatile and also high class in the building process. <laughs> See you later then. And um, also driving-wise, of course, good dynamics. Um, I think BMW is really leading in the driving dynamics for sure. Um, also with the Touring, it doesn't make a big difference if it's a Touring or a Sedan, 
they drive quite like just the air suspension is of course a difference and um I do like air suspension as they offer you a lot of com <laughs> a lot of comfort so um but you have to say that already the basis suspension here from the 5 series is that great that you don't necessarily need an air suspension here it just makes sense if you really have a lot of stuff then in the rear that you still get the very same uh, level then and so for the touring it might make sense in general the suspensions we see from the BMW very good the big diesel is very very powerful and so it's also basically enough to have this one you don't need a more powerful one you can also go for a smaller in general the Mercedes E53 AMG you wanted to see this one especially they have now renamed the 43 to 53 We'll tell you some more about the differences later but of course deliver you everything on exterior interior and a sporty driving experience with this powerful amg model You've already seen that we have the estate or T model as we call it in Germany for today but everything we tell you will count for both sedan and the estate model that will just be the trunk that is the difference everything else will be the same in the front the E53 features my favorite Mercedes grille with this diamond pin also with a special AMG logo then the sensors are hidden behind the Mercedes logo 4 meters 92 or 16 foot 1 or shall I better now say 194 inches we had that discussion now lately if i shall better put the us measurement in inches than in feet give me your feedback to that please today three measurements but i want to really limit it to two that's enough i think 19 inch it starts with the e53 that's also what we have today together with winter tires i think that's also a good choice if you go for bigger rims they might reduce the comfort here also with the dual tone trim a strong horizontal layout here for the rear design with the chrome stripe here across the car and then this if you look at that detail at the rear lights this crystal design really beautifully done in general the e-class offers a two liter four cylinder engines and a three liter six cylinder engines both for petrol and diesel and of course for the petrol also the four liter a cylinder for the 63 amg models this one the 53 amg models replacing the 43 models here also with a nice engine cover this one now also a mild hybrid so 435 horsepower plus 22 horsepower eq boost 48 volt board net and you can also recuperate in this bigger battery then for fuel economy and also for more boost a little bit 4.5 seconds is the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And of course, always with all wheel drive here. Let's experience the interior together. Here this aluminum mesh style as a deco element integrated with the ambient light. Then the Burmester surround sound system, it's an option. Great sound. Inside of the doors does allow some bigger bottles. Then those seats here, those are the optional performance seats. You get normal sports seats with the AMG 53 as a base. I would recommend those because those performance seats here, they have bigger shoulder area and stuff and lower thigh area they hold you tighter 
Better for the race trick maybe, but not for everyday driving. Inside, no shoe tip today because my feet are all clean. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's the classic E-class sitting seating position. So you sit not too low. Mm, you have a good overview still, although it's not a small vehicle. Interior usually starts with analog instruments on the left with a very small screen and on the right 8.4 inch. This one is the option with two times 12.3 inch. Of course, that looks pretty impressive. And you also get the better GPS system. The base GPS system with a small screen is horrible. So that's... Um, the biggest reason to go for the bigger screen here than with the command system. However, you can also, for example, pick the big one here and then stay with the analog on the left. That's also totally okay. I've seen that already. And the head-up display will feature the speed, the allowed speed or direction, but also some GPS information if you have set a direction too. The infotainment system is not touch yet as the new MBUX. This one is not the new MBUX but it's the recent iteration of the older system. Here again, GPS. It's not flickering, by the way, in real life. It is somehow okay from the responsiveness. Um, overall, you can be satisfied. The MBUX voice control is, of course, working better than this one here, but you already have one. There's also the nice ambient light here at the inside of the doors for the rear seats. Then, when I have the seat as I would be driving as a tall driver, um, well, you need to see, move the seat a little bit up that the feet can be put under the seat there. Other than that, there's still knee room left. So let's take a look at the trunk, electric tailgate. The maximum liter figure is 1,820 liters. I'll soon show you that. First of all, some measuring. So the normal trunk length is about 1 meters 30. Flip the seats electronically, right there, left and also on the right. Here we go, and then you have the maximum setup. Welcome. That is comfort mode, but you already hear some exhaust note, of course. But what about, since it's a performance vehicle, we put it in Sport Plus here. And the... Oh. And the exhaust noise is a little louder. Also, when you let off the throttle and you hear the, you know, the roaring sound, sometimes, <laughs> not always. But interesting is this suspension here is this AMG Ride Control Plus, but it is based still on the air suspension and well, it is hard to feel in it because they have made it pretty stiff, so it's not this floating soft air suspension you might know from a normal E-Class with an air suspension. But the E53, or former also the 43, has a suspension setup that is still somehow suitable for everyday driving. Stau in the Voraus. Interesting. So the GPS just told me that there would be the end of a traffic jam ahead without I had, you know, I didn't have any GPS route set or something. But that's pretty helpful, you know. There's also um, this new assistant system they've been introducing now in the recent Mercedes facelift or the new models that the this Tronic, so the adaptive cruise control, already reduced the speed if you're going like really fast, like. It's a German thing, sorry. Like 150 or something. Ah, there's the end of the traffic jam. So it was really good to have the info, but we're getting off here anyway. But really good as for the safety feature. Here now again, the, the acoustic warning from the autonomous emergency braking assistant, which is standard for the vehicle. Maybe just right before the truck. I'll start from 40 and let's go. So that's 200 kilometers or 125 miles per hour. Oh. Felt powerful but refined. <clears throat> and even at about 200, it's still super silent in the car, you know. 
Wow. Both sedan and estate, they drive the same for sure. The 53 with a diamond pin grille, very beautiful. My favorite front grille, very elegant exterior, one of my favorite estates. What about you? Interior, super central design. Also this dual screen setup looks pretty cool, but they don't have the new software on there. You know, that, that's a disadvantage if you pick newer infotainment systems for newer cars, then the older ones always look dated. That's about the same thing with the infotainment system here. But overall, I still like the interior pretty much. Even more if you stick with the base sport seats, which will do more in the comfort and also keep the price down. You also have reasonable space on the interior. And of course, the estate has a big advantage to the sedan that you have more versatile trunk, especially. The driving, just superb. The 53 adds a better compromise than the 63. Here you can still somehow balance comfort and sportiness. And the E-Class overall is such a silent ride, such a confident ride. And here with some more sporty fun. And I could score some lower consumption figures later on even. I can give you an update on that. So it seems that this um, mild hybrid system, yes, it's not like a total different world in consumption, but it truly seems to help you, especially like in city driving situations where you can use this recuperation a little bit more. So why not? So considering the powerful performance and also the size of the vehicle, the consumption is still quite decent. Well, so overall, still a really great car. One of the dream estates there is on the market, but the price, whew, I mean, come on. The T model or the estate here is already a couple of thousand euros more expensive than a normal sedan. So you pay at least, taking German reference price, about 40,000 euros. Then if you go for the E53, that's already doubling the price to 80,000. Wow, I mean, that's not really justifying everything. And then if you go for some more extra specs like the Burmese sound system and some of the you know, infotainment stuff we went here for, wow, 150,000 euros. And that's you know, where my understanding is you know, just ends. I think that's just too expensive. So I can rather recommend you then to go maybe for a smaller petrol engine, not pick everything full spec with the E-Class and you still already will have a great upper mid-size vehicle. Volvo V90, the estate version, or the Kombi as we say in German. with the front here for the V90. It's the same as in the S90. This is the inscription trim level, the top luxury trim level. And here the front grille has those vertical fins. Four meters, 96 or 16 foot three is the total length of this vehicle. It's the same as in the S90. Here, of course, the V90, the biggest difference is that we got the continuous roof line for the estate version. And here we can see the taillights up close. They really rem remind us of the XC90 and are fundamentally different to the S90. And some of you said, mm, not really satisfied with the S90 taillights. I also think this one here is more beautiful, although I'm more of a shape fan guy of a sedan. But here I think the rear is more beautiful with the estate. My favorite is this open cell wood here. I would always go for that. And yes, I don't have any problems with cutting off trees. Then, 
everything the bright surface here and usually the outside parts are from faux leather and the seat parts from the genuine animal skin. Here chrome again is used, solid metal, everything. Really love the build quality. Then first look at the interior. What is interesting from a style, I mean this fitting bright surfaces to the muscle blue on the exterior, that is a very real setup. However, they are lacking of animal skin alternatives here in the higher trim levels. You have to go for the momentum trim level to get cloth seats, for example, or our design than for at least microfiber on the inside. My price performance would be to go for middle trim level and momentum trim level because usually you already got everything you need inside there. Then a quick overview and really a beautiful job and one of my favorites also in this segment of this clean Scandinavian design. Horizontal lines right there and also the structure. We can take a detailed look at that one soon. Then this infotainment screen, you get it optional in the higher trim levels. I think every Volvo V9 that leaves the plant will have this screen then because hardly anyone buys the very, very, very basic Volvo. And have this ignition show for us. Right side RPM, left side speed and in the middle one you can also uh, have some information for example on the uh, on the GPS or also on your on your sound and so on on the if you have picked something for the radio I can scroll through some of the things here you can also have your um, consumption for example right there the doors open not that wide but I mean still it's okay to get in here also the beautiful Scandinavian design continued in the rear with the wood and the bright colors and a lot of space in front of my knees and wow maybe the last time I tested it I sat maybe too far to the rear now I've tested again I'm one meters 86 or six foot one really a lot of space um, only I would maybe tell the driver to lift the seat a little lift the seat a little bit up that I can put my feet a little bit toward uh, beneath the seat it would be good then there's a net here then to the hatch and the loading compartment you can also press the button on the key. There it is. You have to press a little bit harder. Then you see the cover slides up automatically. That's a clean solution. Then interesting here to flip the seats electronically and the left part very versatile solution. We also got a 12 volt power supply in here and then you can see you have a really great loading space all through and so yes they can still build very versatile estates but they only use two liter four cylinders here 254 horsepower and there's also the t6 with 320 horsepower and on the diesel side there would be a d4 with 190 horsepower and the d5 with 235 horsepower and the big engines they always get connected with all-wheel drive <coughs> and the automatic gearbox. Alright, let's start our driving part. Can clear up the rain. And what is very interesting here, I can also show you that while driving and with the camera system. So, here the camera system. I can now also see the front if maybe the view would be blocked or if I'm going over, over a bump. And you can also very well always see the fake drone view from above then if you want it if you're for example getting getting slower I can show you that here when I'm just fake I would be going in this narrow spot here I can either see the rear view camera or switch to the 360 view and then I can very well see if I do fit in here or not so overall again a very convincing camera system Looks just great to, to watch it, even uh, you know if you're driving the car 
uh, life yourself. That's uh, three of the funny things. So, and we're driving this two liter four cylinder engine, it's 250 horsepower, petrol engine, and it will basically deliver you enough power, I can already tell you so far. In this price regions, if you think about, you know, 45,000 entry, 20,000 more with the inscription trim or with the R design. And then the final price of this vehicle here is about 75,000, all of the extras. Yeah, that's expensive. But other upper mid-size premium cars are in the same price region. And then again, you have to think about, does that fit to a two-cylinder, uh, four-cylinder, two-liter two, two four-cylinder engine, that's it. And I personally, personally don't have any problem with it because you know we are on a transition to hybrid and electric cars anyway. So, I mean, if it's not the sport car, it's also not too bad that you don't have this roaring sound. So I'm fine with it. Are you as well? Looking forward to your feedback. Here in this driving part, we will tell you something about city driving. Also, countryside, autobahn, we'll have the different aspects of this car covered for you. Overall, you have this typical, very cozy Volvo feeling, so you immediately feel at home. And sometimes in one of those very high luxury Mercedes car, for example, um, you sometimes get a little bit overwhelmed, um, so you have to get used to the car more. Here with the Volvo, you don't have the, um, the feeling that you would need ages to, to get used to the car, for example. Also, you also have a good overview on the GPS always. That really helps. And so we'll be going left here right soon. The sound insulation overall is very good. Um, also, when you lower the windows, we have this double sound insulation layer here that you can, you know, put your finger inside of the windows. That's very interesting. And again, those superb comfortable seats, they help you really to relax on a long journey. So this is really one of the most comfortable cars in this segment. We have suspension wise, here the air suspension mounted. If you go for that one, it's only in the rear. Do you, well, do you immediately feel that? Hmm, yeah, it's really hard to feel directly. I mean, if we're going over some bumps in the city right now, it's really hard to tell. Okay, in the front there's none, but you do have air suspension in the rear. There will be a difference in comfort. For example, also Mercedes offers that in the E-Class. You can either go, it's recently covered with the, with the T model, you could indeed either go with the air suspension just in the rear, but also could go for the air suspension for both. That is, oh, there will be a train passing the street very soon, so we'll turn around and go the other way. That's also a good test now for the turning circle. And that is one of the bad things about this car. The turning circle is above 11 meters and that's really not that good. Um, so it feels, feels not that agile while turning on standstill. You have a problem with that. However, in normal corners, we will also test that very soon. It does feel agile enough. And that will also be a question when we now test the different driving modes. What about the balance of comfort and agility? That's definitely a crucial point. It is basically a long car, five meters. Well, now we are not allowed to turn right. Weird German traffic. <laughs> so, steering wheel. It's not the most sporty or no, most direct one, but overall it, it feels, let's say it feels natural. We'll turn right here again then and go just just go in a circle. You can also see when I go in a 90 degree turn how I have to turn the steering wheel and we have experienced cars where we had to um, let's say turn it less. 
yes, the Swedes are still able to build very good estates. It's not the very classic ones with the square dimensions in the rear. Yeah, you maybe don't fit that much stuff as in the very old models, but still very versatile to use here in the rear. And definitely, in all of the reasonable aspects, better than the S90. Just if you're really a sedan lover, then it's still way to go with the S90. I think even though I prefer sedans in general from the visual perspective, I would still go for the V90 to have the you know the higher flexibility. And as I said earlier, either in a mom momentum trim level when it's available in your market for a best price performance, or if it has to be the highest trim level you want to go for, then probably the R design we have already shown you to have a better seating setup. Here the inscription. Um, Tell me which one you liked best there. I think of all the design, exterior and the interior, they did a great job there, the designers. And uh, also from the driving part, really a very competitive model. It's really a tough question which of the premium brands you should pick in this segment here. All have their different strengths. And now to our final verdict of those four large premium estates. First of all, we could not deliver all four cars with directly comparable engines. Audi and Volvo with a 4-cylinder, Mercedes with a sporty 6-cylinder and BMW with a 6-cylinder diesel. But that indeed was a very interesting choice to compare because you can also think about the proper engine choice. The three German cars are all available as high horsepower sporty versions, the Volvo isn't. Overall. They all share similar list prices if you look at the price lists. The most efficient one is the BMW diesel, which is the best engine in this test if you think about price, performance and economy. Exterior wise, Audi shows the most angularity, while BMW has the most conservative design. Volvo and Mercedes play a little bit more with the sensual elements. The interior build quality is best with Audi and BMW. The room that is being offered does not differ that much. As for the infotainment concept, Audi and Volvo set all sales on touchscreens, whereas BMW and Mercedes also offer classic controllers and are also heading towards a better voice input. We felt the Audi had the best seating comfort, also the Volvo seats have a great ergonomic form. And the Mercedes shows the most sensual and emotional interior design. Mercedes has also the most and best alternatives to animal skin on the seats. As for the suspension, the Mercedes air suspension is the softest one in a base E-Class, so to say, or a luxury edition E-Class. The E43 is of course definitely stiffer. Noise insulation is also best in the E-Class. The BMW offers a good compromise between sportiness and comfort, gives you the most agile driving feeling, maybe also the most fun. The Audi is also agile already in the base version, also a lot of fun to drive. The Volvo does not want to be that sporty and focuses on calm driving experience. The question now is which of those aspects is the most important to you? All four are very good cars, they are all very expensive and all have their slightly different focuses. You get the Audi A6 if you want the clean interior experience. And also already a sporty ride. The BMW 5 Series if you want, let's say, the most fun sporty ride. The Mercedes E-Class, but not as E43 if you want the softest riding comfort. And the Volvo V90 if you want to stand out from the common Germans. So what do you think? Which one of those four cars would be your favorite? Please vote and comment also in our comments section. And I hope you really enjoyed this in-depth look.